It's another Q&A edition of Optimal Health Daily, episode 1652, and I'm Dr. Neil, your host of the show. Welcome back to another Friday show where I answer your questions. On all the other days, I read health and fitness blogs to you, kind of like an ongoing audiobook, with permission from the authors, of course. And once a month, usually during the first Q&A episode of the month, I mention a bit about my background and my credentials so you can better understand where my perspectives come from. And given this is the first Q&A of the month, it's time. Now, I've always been obsessed with Batman. Oh, speaking of which, I'm extra excited today since the newest Batman film comes out today. Anywho, I wasn't always interested in nutrition, exercise, health, and wellness. But being diagnosed with a chronic disease at the age of 19 definitely changed my life's purpose. It was then that I decided to focus my attention on helping others so that No one else had to experience a chronic disease diagnosis like I did. But in order to do that, I wanted to be sure I had some credibility. So this is not meant to be a humble brag, but instead gain your trust. I received both my master's and doctoral degrees in public health. And to really cover all of my bases, I also became a registered dietitian nutritionist, a certified health education specialist, and a certified exercise physiologist through the American College of Sports Medicine. I've also been teaching in higher education for over 14 years, and I'm currently faculty within the California State University system. I've published peer-reviewed studies, presented at national conferences, and have been interviewed by over 70 different media outlets for my expertise on basically all the stuff I talk about on this podcast. So all of this to say that when I provide my commentary after each episode and answer the questions you send in, I hope you feel as though it's coming from a place of truth. My only intention is to help you feel your best. Now, before we get to it, research increasingly shows that a healthy gut microbiome is crucial to a healthy life. For those with type 2 diabetes, diet and exercise alone are often not enough to manage it. The best approach emphasizes diet, exercise, and a healthy gut microbiome. With Pendulum, you can feel in control of your levels, not the other way around. If you or someone you love has type 2 diabetes, take control of glucose levels with Pendulum Glucose Control. Use code OHD at PendulumLife.com to get 20% off all products. For now, let's hear today's question and start optimizing your life. Today's question came via email. Anonymous writes, Sometimes when I'm craving is something greasy or sweet or generally unhealthy. For instance, I don't know how this started, but when I go see a play at night, I find myself going through a drive through afterwards to enjoy at home. I think there are some things at play here, no pun intended. I'm generally still wired from the show, and I know I won't go straight to bed. I like the ritual of eating, thinking about the play, and settling my mind before I start my bedtime routine. Also, I've really cut down my fast food intake, so I don't feel incredibly guilty about this quote-unquote cheat. Plus, it's now become a Pavlovian response. I see a play, therefore I crave fast food. I'm just wondering if you have any tips on redirecting that craving, or should I just give in and not worry about it? And by the way, I generally see a play once a month. Thank you so much for taking the time to send me your question. So, if I understand, some guilty feelings start to creep up when you find yourself stopping off to grab some fast food. And this fast food stop isn't random. It usually happens at a certain time, usually after seeing a play. Now, unless your healthcare provider has said that you must absolutely stay away from fast food at all costs, I would say, don't worry about it. But let's face it, it's easy for me to tell you that. In reality, you're experiencing these guilty feelings. No one can tell you that you should feel otherwise. These feelings are natural. But my reason for saying that this fast food habit is likely not a big deal is because you said two important things. One, you've cut down on your fast food intake already. And two, it sounds like this happens only about once a month or so. Consuming fast food once a month doesn't concern me all that much. In fact, if most people stuck to consuming fast food only once a month, that would be pretty amazing. But it sounds like even though these trips through the drive-thrus are relatively rare, it still bothers you. So 
If you want to break this seemingly Pavlovian response, there are ways to do it. It just takes time and patience. One tip would be to grab some fast food, but maybe choose a more nutritious meal. So instead of a burger and large fries, maybe a grilled chicken sandwich and an order of small fries. You probably thought I was going to say order a salad, didn't you? Hey, I'm a reasonable person. Now, if you want to remove fast food from the routine entirely, that's possible too. What we need to do is find a substitute behavior that's not food related, but at the same time makes you feel just as happy and content as if you still went through the drive through Here's why. When we get to the root of why this behavior, or really any behavior, occurs, it's usually because it ultimately makes us happy, or we think it will make us happy. So if we expect that eating fast food after watching a play will make us feel happy and content, we need to find another behavior that will make us feel just as happy and content, or close to it. Now here's where it gets tricky for me. I don't know what makes you happy. What I've done with my patients in the past is this. I ask them to write down a list of things that make them happy. I don't want them to overthink it. They can write down anything. It could be watching a sunset on the beach to watching their favorite sports team or TV show or something as random as not hitting traffic on the way to work. Anything and everything goes, just so long as it's not food related. I then have them choose one or two items from the list that they think they could substitute in place of the habit they want to change. So in this case, instead of picking up some fast food on the way home, is there something else that you could do that would make you feel just as happy and relaxed? Or maybe even happier? Make a list and see what comes of it. Have a friend, partner, or family member help you. What's interesting about cravings and breaking that Pavlovian response is that most cravings only last for five to 10 minutes. So if we can distract ourselves with something that makes us happy for five to 10 minutes, then it's likely the craving will pass. And just as the habit of stopping to get fast food after a play took time to develop, allow yourself time to break the habit as well. Now, if you haven't heard, Mel Robbins, a best-selling global phenomenon and one of the leading voices in personal development, is back with a new Audible original podcast, Here's Exactly What to Do, which invites you to reimagine the life you want and gives you the tools to take action. Each of the 14 episodes focuses on an attitude or situation that's holding you back. Is your confidence in need of a recharge? Is your creativity running low? Are you not carving out the right life balance? Or are you just feeling blah and can't get out of bed? In her typical no BS style, Mel cuts through the hype to deliver the simple tools you need to move forward and create positive change. These short, impactful episodes are the perfect way to take a break, take a breath, and feel truly empowered. Here's Exactly What to Do is the perfect follow-up to start here, her 13-topic breakdown of how to deal with whatever life is throwing at you. Available only on Audible. Audible audible.com slash what to do. Thank you again so much for taking the time to send me your question. Now, if you want to send your questions in, you can email them to health at oldpodcast.com. That's oldpodcast.com. Or if you want your voice played on the show, come by oldpodcast.com slash ask. And of course, you can always do it the old-fashioned way and call in your question. The number is 61 I love ohd All right, that'll do it from me for today. Thank you so much for listening every day and all the way through, and I'll see you back here tomorrow where your optimal life awaits.